and thanks everybody for attending. Um, for this month's topic, I wanted to focus on plugin objects, which are the um, numerous tools that Vectorworks has uh, developed over the years and continues to expand upon. And those are things like uh, parametric columns, parametric doors, um, uh, all sorts of um, sort of application specific uh, uh, tools that you tend to control through some sort of a numerical interface as opposed to just directly modeling everything. And uh, the nice thing about parametric objects is that you know, they do a lot of the heavy lifting of uh, modeling for you. And uh, like any automated system, uh, there's a trade-off, right? Generally speaking, the more things are automated, um, as a rule, the less control you tend to have. And sometimes uh, there are some um, design nuances or certain things that you want to do with the parametric tool that at first glance, it looks like the tool can't, can't do. So what I wanted to focus on today is looking at some ways in which we can tweak or customize uh, parametric tools or just use them in sort of interesting combinations that um, uh, may not necessarily be immediately immediately obvious. Uh, so I've got a couple of photographs here, uh, a couple of projects. Um, the image at the bottom is a house that Mel Lawrence did several years ago. Uh, so a shout out to Mel for allowing me to use that that photograph, uh, but I'm going to start here on the top right, and um, go ahead and uh, open this link. This is, um, yeah, I need that. This is a uh, hyperlink object, which is happens to be a photograph that uh, opens a Vectorworks file. So that, there, that's a that's a little bonus. So. Um, this is a little remodel that we did uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, one of the things that you might notice is that we we enclosed this uh, front porch from the, the photograph that I was just showing you. Um, was before we did this tiny little addition in the front. Uh, but what I wanna draw your attention to is, is the door. All right, so let's zoom in here. And you can see that this door is, uh, it's, uh, you know, somewhat unique. And uh, if we go ahead and uh, look at the object info palette and check its settings, and we go to the leaf pane, uh, you can see that it's called out as a custom leaf. So normally I could do a solid door or a glass door or a panel door, and I might be able to get close uh, to recreating this exact uh, door, but um, but I might not be able to get all the way there with all of these different these different settings. And so as part of the door object, there is this this custom object. And if I if I click on this custom leaf, you'll see that Vectorworks ships with um, lots of different options. These are all the ones that you're seeing um, in elevation uh, over here. And uh, it turns out that of all of these doors that Vectorworks sh ships with, uh, there still wasn't the exact door uh, that, uh, that we needed. Like this, this one was kind of close. Right, so if I hit OK, you'll see that door will reshape, but the color is wrong, and you know there's all sorts of things that um, didn't didn't quite didn't quite do the trick that was getting us close. So um, the way that you can uh, add your own custom leaf is you need to do some uh, a little bit of 3D modeling uh, on your own. And so what I'm going to do in order to demonstrate that is I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and um, do an option drag and pull this door um, out of the wall. So now I've created a duplicate of that door. And let me just kind of zoom in on here. So 
there it is. It's still a door. And in 3D, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup it. Yes, I definitely want to ungroup this high level object. And so now if we inspect it from the object info palette, you can see that it's four objects. It's an extrude, it's a group, another extrude. So I'm gonna peel away the trim and the outside trim and the jam. These are all generated um, from, from uh, Vectorworks. And what I'm left with is uh, this, this group. <clears throat> And so I'm showing you this because this is a way of starting out with a custom leaf that might be close to what you want, but you may want to modify it in some ways. And so what you'll need to do is you'll need to, you know, roll up your sleeves and, and get some modeling done. So let's let's go ahead and um, get into this group. And since I've already built this door, we don't need to we don't need to you know reinvent the the wheel. But um, uh, you know, there's all sorts of ways that you could do this. You could draw it in elevation and then extrude it and subtract out the window and then, you know, put in a, um, so this is thick solids that constitute this door. So let me pin my object info palette so it stays open. There we go. So I'll just select one. So, you know, here's one, here's a solid subtraction. Uh, here's a panel, right? Uh, here are the sort of Craftsman Munton bars. There's even the glass, though it doesn't really show very well uh, here in shaded mode. So all of these things were, were modeled. And um, even though this is a, a solid subtraction, what I want to do in order to create a custom leaf is I wanna convert all of these um, model components to a generic solid. So uh, I'll just select all that and go to uh, modify, convert, and convert to a generic solid. Now, once I do that, I, there's, no, there's no going back, right? I can't go into the solid subtraction and fiddle with the subtractive or Boolean element. Um, I can still reshape things, right? Like, um, uh, not that I, I mean, probably wouldn't do this, but just for example, uh, I go to the 3D palette and say, um, uh, taper a face, right? I can, let me kind of get in here. Well, not that close. A little bit crazy there. So I'm, I'm, I'm over here. I could still taper a face with the, um, with this tool and, uh, well, Maybe I can't, but one could uh, taper a face with this tool. So I can go ahead and select this as my first plane and then go ahead and uh, drag this out. And there you go. I've just chamfered that, that, um, that transition from the frame to the panel, right? So just because it's a generic solid doesn't mean I can't model with it anymore, uh, but it's just a little bit, I can't do Boolean operations um, or edit the Boolean operations that have already been done would probably be the most accurate way of saying it. So I need to create all of these things as a generic solid. And then what I'll need to do is create a symbol once I've converted, gotten this door just the way that I like it, make it a symbol. And ideally I wanna save that symbol in a very special place. So let me go to my uh, save view here. I create a little save view for myself to remind myself of where this symbol needs to go. Uh, there it is, just a little screenshot from the Vectorworks help. Um, so I need to go to my uh, resource libraries. And uh, again, the custom leaves have to be 3D only symbols from generic solids. And so once I do that, um, save, save that symbol up, what I may do is I may uh, create a file for myself where I collect all of my custom leaves all in the same file. Each of them is a symbol. Each of those symbols is a 3D only object made from generic solids. So let's see, if I go to my Vectorworks preferences and I go to my user folders, um, I can reveal that in Finder. Okay. And I don't know if you all can see that folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add that share. Okay, so 
Can, can everyone see my VectorWorks preference pane here? Yes. Okay, great, thanks. So I'll reveal it in Finder and you can see this uh, uh, folder view here, hopefully. And you can see that if I go, here's the user folder for VectorWorks 2023. You can see my VectorWorks versions go pretty far back. Um, and I go down to libraries and I go to defaults and I burrow down and it'll say things like door custom leaves, right? And so here's a file that I created and I placed in this specific folder and I'll go ahead and open it just to show you. Cancel out of these. Let's try that again. All right. Can you all see that door? Yes. Yes. Yep. All right. So that's basically the same door that I just showed you. I just, it's a symbol. Um, I called, I gave it a custom name. And so if I go to the resource manager for this file, right, you can see I've got one custom leaf in there, but I could have 10, 20, whatever. And so by saving that file, I can give it any name that I want, but I want to save it in this specific location, door custom leaves, right? Uh, by saving that, that file with these, with these objects, right? If I go back to my original file and I look at that door, you can see from my settings that that door symbol is showing up as one of my custom leaf options. Now, if I were to hand this file off to somebody who didn't have that custom leaf file in the default content location that I just showed you, they would still be able to see the door. They would still be able to display that door. Um, they would be able to you know, do anything that you would expect that they could do. However, if they wanted to apply that custom leaf to a new door, they couldn't. That, that custom leaf has to be located in that location for them to apply it um, uh, in the future or to, a, or to another door. So that's just something to keep in mind. You can go ahead and create your custom leaves and you can share the models with other users, but if they don't have the original symbol in the default content folder, they're not gonna be able to um, use it any further than in that particular instance. Um, so that's that's kind of a cool thing um, that requires a little bit of um, file maintenance, right? You got to remember where you keep these things. Uh, but the nice thing is once you create that file, you can just keep adding symbols to it as, um, as needed. Um, I want to take just a Minutes Francois? and just see if anybody has any questions. Yeah, I have a question. Hey, Don. So, so if you had created that in 2022 and you're working in 2023, does yeah. it move from the 2022 folder, custom leave folder to the 2023 on my, you know, migration? That is a great question. I don't know off the top of my head if the Vectorworks Migration Manager will move custom files from the Vectorworks 20. 22 or 23 folder to the to the next iteration. This file actually started out, I think, in Vectorworks 2021, if I'm not mistaken, maybe even 2020. So the certainly the geometry itself, like the, the symbol will will uh, move forward, but I, I'm not certain if you have to manually update your user folders with all of your custom doodads. Um, if anyone else knows who's on this, um, that'd be great. If you want to pipe up or we can put a pin in that question and get back to you later, Don. Okay, any other questions that I can't answer? <laughs> All right, terrific. Uh, well, good. I'll just move on to the next thing here. Um, so, uh lately uh well not lately for every once in a while we get to use a pivot door like um the one here in this project we recently completed 
Um, just going to option click that and it'll uh, go ahead and open the document. There we go. All right. Can you guys see the model of the pivot door? Yes. Great. Thank you, Guy. All right. So, yeah, here's an example of a door where actually I could get really close to what I wanted just with the Vectorworks uh, door. I did not make a custom leaf um, out of out of this particular door. Um, but I I will admit that I did cheat slightly and uh, and got a little lazy. And rather than make a custom leaf, let me just go ahead and uh, show you the settings for this door. You can see that when I look at the settings for the door, um, I could create the width and the height and the glazing, right? But I found that um, when I went to my um, leaf, um, there was an option to go ahead and have just a single top panel. So it's a panel door. Uh, I could make it two and a quarter inches thick, which is the thickness that the pivot door company stipulated for this size door. Um, I could uh, define the top panel as glass as opposed to the others. Um, right, make it uh, set a top panel height, single top panel. Uh, and glaze it. If I don't do a single top panel, it looks like this, but you can see that the door has four lights above and three panels before. So that's that's not what I wanted. Um, so that, that wasn't an option, um, but I could also do some vertical bars here. So I thought, well, that's great. I'll just make some vertical bars, what, what you know we would call muntins, to be three and a half inches by say an inch thick. And, uh, and I could just do three muntins and vertically, but unfortunately what happens is that the, I start getting the muntins go all the way around. Like clearly this is intended to model a condition that's more like this, right? Uh, where there would actually be a stop on the edges, but I'm, I'm trying to kind of tweak it to do something that it really wasn't intended to do. So, uh, so what I really should have done here is I should have done a custom leaf. Uh, but like I said, I was I was a little lazy. So all I did is I just made, uh, uh, this is embarrassing. I made uh, an extrusion, two extrusions, which I'll just drag aside here. Oh, you could see there they are. So, um, uh, and you know, so long as the door doesn't move or doesn't <laughs> doesn't doesn't change from the open position, uh, no one's the wiser. And um, and and there you go. But there's there's two things that I wanted to show you about this particular door, which is um, the fact that um, you can see that Vectorworks doesn't really have yet, as far as I know, a pivot door option. So how did I model this? So I, I, for the transom, I went ahead and put a, a separate window in the wall. I could have just done a transom, but I like making transoms when possible as a separate unit from the door. And that's so that it can show up in the window schedule as its own unit. Um, and also the window ob object gives me a little bit more control um, than the door uh, transom tool does. So the so the transom is its own window. That's simple enough. Uh, but if I look at this door, you can see that there is, in fact, um, get that thumbnail out of the way. In fact, uh, you know, I can now do a barn door with Vectorworks. I can do uh, multi slides. There are all sorts of doors types that have been added um, as the software has evolved, but pivot door is not currently one of them. So what I typically do for that is I just put another door. Uh, again, I made this a group. I just have another door. And so this door is a door that has no jam and it's not inserted in the wall. It's just sitting there in space. And if I go to my uh, plan view, you can see that there, there it is. I've just, you know, doctored this with a little bit of extra 
drafting some, you know, arc and uh, a dashed line for the door in the open position. Um, and, uh, and, and, and there you have it, pivot door. Now, um, I'm trying to remember if I have a, a, a door schedule that's appropriate in this file. Let me look. Let's look at that window. Um, sorry, that door schedule. Yep, there it is. So, you know, um, ba, 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 ba. I don't think that's it. Well, anyway, what I probably would have done um, if I was doing this correctly with the with the door schedule is had a notes field in my door schedule and just called this out um, as a pivot door. Um, so that's that's how I can sort of rectify this um, with my sort of scheduling and so forth. Let me see what do I have here. There's my ID tag. Yeah, it's included on schedule. Oh, it's door number four. So let me go back and look at door number four. Let's see how I did this. Yeah, that's not right. That's funny. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, so, uh, so, you know, it's still possible to go ahead and schedule that door. And um, uh, it just doesn't happen to be inserted in a wall. And then, of course, the door that makes the opening in the wall and that basically serves as the as the plan um, as the as the jam for the, for the door. Uh, that's just a door and wall, and it's just essentially a cased opening. So there it is. Uh, it's just configured as a cased opening, and I do not include that on the schedule in spite of what the uh, object info palette says. Um, so uh, then um, the uh, the other the other sort of customized thing about this door that I wanted to show you is the is the door hardware. Um, let's go back into this group. So here's a pull handle. I made it into a group, um, right? And so there it is. It's just uh, an extrusion and some more extrusions um, that uh, hold the vertical bar in place. And that's a that's a three foot three foot bar. And again, just just like those um, uh, light dividers uh, in the upper sash. This isn't part of the door per se. It's just a group that I've um, that I've just placed there. And again, if it's a one-off door and um, that's all that I'm doing, um, you know, it's sloppy, but this works. Kind of gets the job done. But if it's something that I think I, you know, may um, use this kind of door again in the future, it might be worth. Uh, my customizing um, the hardware. So, um, so it's a customizing the hardware on the door is um, kind of a similar um, idea um, in the end as creating a custom door leaf. So let's go ahead and look at the settings of this guy. And let's go over to hardware and you can see that I've got no hardware on this door, but um, I went ahead and clicked on manage hardware and I added um, some uh, hardware category, which is uh, this pivot pull, pull bar vertical 36 inches. Um, I added that. And if I edit that, uh, I've given it a name. I have to give it a hardware set ID, whether I schedule it or not. So I usually just put an A or an X in there and then let it go. And then you can see that here's the symbol that this refers to. So here are all the hardware symbols that Vectorworks ships with. And this uh, pull bar, 36 inches, is not one of them, right? 
um, that's that's a custom um, little model that um, that I that I made from that group that I just that I just showed you. So it's the same principle as the custom leaf. All right. I'm going to go to my um, vectorwork settings and uh, reveal my user folder in the finder. And again, same deal, libraries, defaults, only now instead of door custom leaves, I'm gonna look at door hardware. <clears throat> and here there's another file that I created called custom hardware. I'll go ahead and open that. I've got to cancel this first. I'll go ahead and open that. And so if we look in that files resource manager, you can see that I've got a whopping two symbols. I've got a pull bar 36 and a pull bar 48 inches. So let me go ahead and edit the 3D component of that. And you can see there it is. So again, um, here, I, unlike the leaf, I don't need to make this generic, um, a generic solid. It's okay for me to keep these as extrusions or Boolean operations or whatever. You know, if I really want to get fancy here um, and want to increase my rendering times for no particularly good reason, I could go ahead and give this like an eighth of an inch chamfer on the top here. You know, I could go crazy and just make this, you know, just as, um, uh, just as uh, detailed as, as I like. Um, probably a point of diminishing returns on that level of modeling. So the reason that the door hardware doesn't need to be a generic solid, unlike the door leaf, is that it never gets reshaped. It is the geometry that it is. Uh, one thing that I failed to mention, I'm gonna go back to the other file here, Right, is um, this door, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my clip cube and pull that door out, right? So the nice thing about this door being a custom leaf is I might've modeled it as being three feet by six, eight, right? But I can, it's a parametric object, so I can make it four feet wide. I can make it eight feet tall. And you can see that the door reshapes itself proportionately, right? So it'll be slightly distorted. Uh, from the original geometry. But uh, for almost any use, I can make this, you know, a, a, a 32 by seven foot door. And uh, it, you know, it works, it works pretty well. Now, you know, obviously the styles and rails are gonna change a little bit, but um, for most purposes, that's that's gonna be okay. And Vectorworks can handle that because it's it's a generic solid. And so it can just stretch it as it needs to. Uh, but for whatever reason, with the hardware, um, uh, it you know since you don't since you don't need to reshape that uh, hardware, it is what it is. Um, then you don't need to make that a generic symbol or generic three D geometry. So again, uh, just to just to reiterate, in my uh, Vectorworks user settings, I've got libraries and I've got custom door hardware, and I've created this uh, file. I can name it whatever I want. Uh, custom hardware. And so now if I go to that pivot door and go to its settings, I can go ahead and include hardware. And if I manage that hardware, I'll edit that. And you can see that I've assigned a uh, this pull bar 36, right? And I'll hit OK or done and hit OK. And uh, if I just drag here, I'm gonna select the group and delete it. You're still, now you're seeing the hardware that's actually attached to the door. So if I just go the step further and simply make this a custom door leaf with the, you know, geometry that I like, now I've got a pivot door that, you know, I can, I can reuse with the kind of hardware that I want. And again, if I, if I really like this kind of uh, door hardware, but I may want to go with a four foot, instead of a instead of a three foot 
uh, pull bar and go to the settings and uh, manage my hardware. I can either edit that and create another one or add another one. Uh, and um, Okay, and I'll pick a symbol. And there's the symbol that I made for the 48 inch version. It's in that same file, done. And now I'll give it a 48 and hit okay. And there you go. It's um, 48 inches tall versus 36 inches tall because I've, I've got that, that hardware. Um, so Sorry, if you've ever, yeah. What sets the height of the hardware? It's a setting in the door. So if I go to my hardware, you can see that I've got a strike edge offset, which is the distance from the center line of that hardware to the jam. And then I've got a bottom edge offset, and that's from the bottom of the door to the insertion point of the symbol. So that's what, that's what sets it. So if I wanted to make it lower, for example, hit OK. There, it just dropped six inches. Oh, and you can see that I made a modeling error here. <laughs> Check that out. So notice that the door is not, that the hardware is not symmetrically placed in the door. So, you know, if I discover that, I can go back to my custom hardware. Here's the file. And I can go, what I think I'll do is, I know that the 36 inch one is correct and the 48 is not. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just delete that object. And then I'll just duplicate this. Rename it 48. Uh, edit the 3D component. Make these two extrusions um, 48 inches instead of 36, but move them down six inches so that it stays centered. We go to an isometric view. I'll take these two point, these two um, connection bars and move them up six inches. Sorry, move them up six inches and take these two and move them down six inches. Exit. Now I'll save that file. Notice that saving the file didn't fix this symbol, right? So what I need to do is I need to manage the hardware, edit that, and um, I think if I just reselect it, that will fix it, but maybe not. Or something I had, no. Uh, I have to remember what I did to fix this the last time when I was, uh, testing this out. So let me just go ahead and edit that and go to um, change it from the 36. Oh, I know what it is. Okay, now I know what it is. When you have custom hardware, right, and you apply it to a door, Vectorworks will import a copy of that custom hardware into your file. So let me go over to that pivot door file. And there it is. There's the pull bar 36. There's the pull bar 48. But it, it copied that from my library of custom hardware. And even though I refreshed the library, it didn't refresh the symbol. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that from the active file. I'll delete that. There we go. And then if I go to my settings and pick that door and hit OK, And I will go ahead and manage that and essentially re-import that symbol. And now I hit done and, and there it is. And now it's, it's, correctly, it's correctly placed within the door. Incidentally, if you're wondering why there's a different finish on the door on the interior versus the exterior, um, 
that's just because for my classes for the door, I've got a material class for fir and one for oak, and I assigned the oak texture to the exterior rails and styles, the exterior panels, and then uh, the fir was applied to the interior panels, uh, uh, jam rails and styles and so forth. So if, if that was that was bothering anybody, that's how that works. Any other questions about custom hardware? All right. Well, we can get back to it if anybody comes up with something. Okay, so uh, let's see what I've next. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so Mel's uh, uh, garage door here. Um, I, I know this project. It was, um, I think it was under construction when I worked with Mel. I didn't have anything to do with the design of it uh, at all. Um, but that was just a cost. That was just a, a standard uh, roll up. Uh, garage door, if my memory serves correctly, to which some some wood slats had been applied. So I'll just open that document. Yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, here's a little garage door. If I can select it. There we go. So that's just a door, right? But um, it does not, there is no option in the door settings to create these kind of slats. In fact, if you look at the door um, in the settings, you can see that um, it's a, the leaf, it's a glass door, uh, sort of like an aluminum roll-up door, right? With um, uh, five horizontal panels divided into four lights each. And nowhere in this preview will you see the slats because they're a separate object, you know, kind of like my trick of adding the, um, of adding the uh, divisions in the light to the pivot door. Um, so what I did here, let me just go to a wireframe view, might be a little bit easier to grab things. Uh, what I did here is I'm just having a hard time grabbing anything. Yeah, just won't let me. <clears throat> Maybe it's so dark I can't see what I'm doing. Well, you can at least see it at this point. Let's do this. Let's make this door class gray. Yep, this file is really not letting me grab things. There we go. What do we have here? A wall. All right, so this is just a uh, a use of the railing tool to create those slats. So that's another parametric object. In this case, what I did is I just made a lot of posts and uh, no infill. And um, I made the posts an inch and a half wide by three quarters. And I gapped them uh, four inches apart, more or less. And then Vectorworks will just sort of array them for me. Uh, so, you know, that's if you wanted to. Uh, a a vertical if i wanted to make this uh say horizontal right you would think oh well that that's that's easy under the infill i'll just uh create um some uh, uh frame with bars or whatever and just get rid of the posts but it turns out once you get rid of the posts with the uh, with the railing tool, then um, it all falls down quite literally. You, you can't have any infill without posts. So I'd have to have at least a post at the beginning and the end, which is not really what I wanted. So what I did in this case is if I wanted to change that out, I've got another little uh, trick. Um, 
which is that I created a shelving unit. Move that into position, more or less. Okie dokie. So here's a shelving unit. And uh, all that I did, let me group that so we can see it on its own. All that I did there is create some shelves that were two and a half inches thick, but only three quarters of an inch uh, deep. And then the nice thing about that is that unlike an extrusion or a multiple extrusion or whatever, I don't need to fuss about, oh, how am I going to space this evenly? I could just change the number of shelves until I get a spacing that I'm happy with. And, um, um, and, and there you go. So, so sometimes just augmenting one parametric object with another parametric object um, makes it really easy to, to model some things and you just have to be creative and, you know, do things like use shelves for fences. Um, not, not really what it was intended to do, but, but, but it works. Um, all right, let's see. If I go back to this project over here, let me get rid of that door. Um, we have this uh, this pergola in that same project. And there's a certain degree of customization that I can do just with the framing member. So let me show you that. So that's a group. And um, if I click on any of these individual framing members, you can see that I've specified a length, I've specified a width and a height. And um, if I go to top plan view, you can see that uh, these were all, the, the width was determined by pretty much just drawing an imaginary circle. And just having these things sort of be as long as they needed to be in order to meet the circle. And if I look at it from the side, there we go. Right. Here are all my framing members from the side. And you can see that I can assign a, a bevel uh, to that framing member to give that, that slight sort of um, cut at the end. But what if I wanted to do uh, something a little bit more uh, elaborate with the profile uh, of that roof, right? So um, what, what many users may not know is that you can still do um, modeling operations to framing members. And in fact, a number of other Vectorworks plugin objects. So in this case, I'm just using the automatic plane detection feature here and I'm drawing a circle. I'm gonna draw it from the middle, right? And I'll just uh, uh, latch on to the side face of that uh, framing member and I'll just draw a circle and snap to the midpoint. And then because I have my uh, push-pull mode on, uh, if the ex next operation that I make is to grab the face of that circle and drag it, it will automatically extrude it. And because I have this relatively new mode on this combined mode, um, it is going to subtract and carve out that framing member. And so I can easily just snap to these midpoints and uh, quickly go through and uh, carve out these little rafter, decorative rafter tail ends.
And there's this one at the end. And there we go. Now, when I look at this in top plan, right? And if I click on one of these, there it is. It now calls it a solid subtraction. It doesn't call it a framing member anymore. So one of the nice things about framing members is that, um, you know, they they are hybrid. They are hybrid objects. They can appear to have width and a solid fill in plan, but then they can have some, you know, three D geometry. Um, but because it's a solid subtraction, because it's a Boolean object, right? I can do something like I can double click on it and edit the solid. And so now there's that circle that I extruded. And if I click on this, it's still a framing member. So I can even do something, you know, highly unlikely, like change it from a solid beam to say a steel section. Uh, probably not that quite that size. Let's find the teeniest one I wide flange I can, right? Um, so you can see I can, uh, and here that extrusion, uh, because this is a wider uh, piece than the original wood beam, right? That extrusion didn't quite do the trick. Um, so I can just go to top plan view and just stretch that extrusion fine, you know, just like I would do with any kind of an extrusion or, or any kind of a Boolean operation. Um, and so there you go. So I can take these steel members. I can cut holes in the uh, in the web. I can I can sculpt the end, and um, it doesn't. Right, this could be problematic for my graphics if I have this kind of uh, steel member, and you can see that I'm getting all these additional lines because of the. Uh, fill it at the transition from the web to the flange and so forth, right? So that's not that's not necessarily what I want. But then what I could do with that is I could, um, under my AEC menu, create an auto hybrid out of that object. And so now in plan view, it has whatever view that I want, um, but then it's still a, th a 3D uh, object in a 3D view, right? And then I can double click on it and I can edit it to my heart's content. Um, I don't know when uh, Vectorworks started letting us do solid subtractions to things like framing members. Um, it was a few versions ago. It just kind of got snuck in without any fanfare that I recall. And um, suddenly we could do this. And uh, it's just the it's just the coolest thing because you can do these, you know, nice expressive pergolas. And uh, you know, it sure beats drawing a steel profile and extruding it and then doing that subtraction. It's really nice to start with a framing member as the as the starting point. Uh, huh. I'm just yammering away. Are there? I haven't looked to see if there are any any chat. No, no questions in chat. Anybody have want to interrupt me? Ask some questions. Make some comments. You'll need to unmute yourself. Hey, Francois. Hey, Keith. Good to hear from you. Those are some excellent tips you're sharing with us today. I just wanted to oh. thank you for that. Um, oh, sure. Absolutely right. It really relies, um, or really comes down to the creativity that you bring to these tools that's, uh, you know, they're there and they're available kind of out of the box to use for uh, a certain set array of instances or typical procedures, but that you've just shown how with a little creativity and open-minded approach to experiment and, and come up with really innovative solutions to design tasks. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just, um, whenever you have a really complex tool, whether it's Vectorworks or something else, any kind of a complex system, there will always be unintended consequences. And these just happen to be some happy unintended consequences. Like, you know, I don't, 
I don't think whoever designed the rail tool thought it would be used to apply slatting to a to a garage door. But you know, or you you can unit. do it. <laughs> yeah, or a shelving unit. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was I was with a customer um, this week in a training and working on a stair, and some stairs have like either um, a long landing, which is effectively a long top tread. Mm -hmm. Before you step to the main floor of the finished floor level of the floor above, but mm -hmm. in this instance, the there was a that kind of situation, but at the bottom of the stair or at the beginning of the stair on the ground level, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, I, I was like, well, there's not a you can't a while you can extend the top tread of a stair, um, you can't extend the bottom tread as far as I know. So the workaround that I came to eventually was let's just ungroup the stair and and stretch it, <laughs> stretch yeah. the bottom tread. Yeah. So the same thing. And I, and I guess the, the stairs, like often we want to do, you know, some s s unique stair design. Um, but the stair is only has a certain amount of, of uh, parameters that you can actually customize. So just to, to get kind of worked out the, the math, you know, that just your, what are your risers? Get right. that out and then you can ungroup the stair and then start to do more custom tailoring of the object. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think we sometimes forget that we can ungroup this 3D geometry. It, you know, if it, if it gets us to the, you know, almost to the goalposts and then we just ungroup it and then we can kind of finish the work. It's still a huge time savings over having to try to work out the stair, you know, from scratch with a bunch of, um, you know, extrusions and Boolean operations and so forth. That's a really good point. Um, well, yeah, thanks for chiming in. I have a couple more to share. Um, I think we still have time. So let's, uh, let's see. I, I, usually when I'm showing roofs, um, I will get questions like, hey, how did you do the roof ridge? <laughs> uh, like this roof, right? Uh, which is just a very cute little roof. Um, and so there's a couple of ways to go about it, right? Um, one thing you could certainly do is you could use the automatic uh, plane detection feature of Vectorworks and just draw a rectangle right on top of that roof. In this case, I'll just make it say four inches wide. Right, and then um, just extrude it, say half an inch, and I've got a roof accessory class that I put my ridge beams, or I'm sorry, uh, 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 ridge uh, ridge caps, right, or flashing, or you know whatever. So I could do that, and then I could do the same thing on the other roof plane, and you know, you, you get the idea. And, and that's like just kind of a direct modeling approach. But what I typically do instead of that is I just, um, I just uh, take the roof and I will uh, duplicate it and maybe move it up an inch. And then I'll go um, and I'll just edit each of these roof faces. So I'll just trace the roof face with like a polygon, for example, right? And then I'll offset it. For that ridge. And then these, I'm just gonna stretch using this uh, edge reshape mode. All right, I'll exit the group. And now you can see that I've got you know, I've got one, um, I've got one little edge of my roof cap. So let me go back to top plan view. Now that I've drawn this, I can just mirror it. So again, I'm, I'm inside the roof and just adding 2D geometry, or I could be outside the roof and tracing it in top plan view. And then, um, 
do a clip command, right? And then I'll mirror that. There we go. So there we go. There's my there's my roof ridge. So it's just a roof, but it's really thin. And you can make it as a series of roof faces. I think these are just um, a bunch of roof faces that I just uh, grabbed from the uh, from from the original roof. So that's that's a little trick I've been doing for for a while, and uh, it's kind of nice. makes your makes your roof look a lot more um, believable, and you know it translates to your elevations and and so forth. And then while we're on roofs, there's also there's always a there's always a gutter question. So um, in this case, I've got a I've got a box gutter on this little shed roof, and um, what I do for box gutters, I'm almost embarrassed to say, is um, but not that embarrassed because I'm showing you right. Is I create a little box gutter wall style. Uh, where is it? Oh, there it is. It's highlighted. So let's look at that. So it's a wall. It's five inches or four inches or six inches, whatever thick. Um, it gets um, set to have a default height of five inches, but I can change it if I need to. It automatically gets placed in my roof accessories class. And so I just, when it's when it's time to put the gutters on, I just go in top plan view and just draw a wall where I think the gutter should go. And then I'll just go into a side view and um, just, you know, position that gutter. There's the, there's the little shed roof that goes with the gutter. There's the gutter. And just kind of position it in a place that, that looks reasonable. And then um, I mentioned this before a few times, um, the uh, downspout, that's just a, a marionette object um, that you can get from the Vectorworks um, um, marionette library. If you just go to the knowledge base discussion board on Vectorworks, there's a whole page of marionette on marionette, and there's a you know 90 some odd custom objects that uh, Vectorworks staff or users have made and contributed. So um, the only trick to know about this marionette object is that it, it only deals in inches. Um, and so, you know, if you, if you want it to be one foot seven off the wall, that's not gonna work. You've got to tell it, um, uh, you've got to tell it, you know, 19 inches. Um, and so, you know, once you get the hang of it, you can make it a circle or you can make it a rectangle. Um, Let's uh, let's change the depth to you know uh, five inches or four inches if it's a rectangle. Um, and the width to four inches. There we go. Or I can go back to a circle. So nice little tool. Um, pretty pretty easy to customize. You just need to figure out where it's going to be relative to the wall. And so you know there you go. There's there's my simple little little gutter solution, just, just using a wall. Now, um, some of us may take issue with that because um, if I'm going to have a section um, that is gonna pass through that particular gutter, um, right, as I'm, as I'm sectioning along, that, that wall is going to be entirely pochéed solid, um, which just, that just may be very bothersome to some people. And that's okay, I respect that. So um, the thing I just wanna point out is that the, um, the kind of Boolean operations that I just showed you for the, for the rafter tails also works on walls. Oh wait, before I go further, there's a, something in chat. Oh, uh, Matthew just posted a link to the Marionette um, forum or to the Vectorworks forum. So that's in the chat. If anybody isn't familiar with that, go check that out. Um, it's so, it's so great because you know um, you know that the planet is spherical, and so if you're working late at night and you 
have a problem in with some Vectorworks project and you're on a deadline, somewhere, somewhere on this, somewhere on the surface of the sphere, there's going to be another Vectorworks user who is likely to be awake and on the discussion board. And so that's kind of can be your 24 hour uh, tech support if you if you need it to be. I highly recommend uh, signing up for that. Okay, so here on my 3D uh, tool palette, thank you for posting that, Matt. Um, I, there's a shell solid command, so I can just give that solid a thickness of something that's you know thin enough to be believable, but not so thin that it doesn't show up well in section. So I know that an eighth of an inch is too thick for a, a gutter wall, but you know just bear with me. And then for settings, I'm just going to choose, um, you know, it's just going to be a face, so that's cool. And so I'll just tap the top of this wall and I'll click the little checkbox and there you go, man. It's, um, it's a box gutter. Now, uh, you know, I may need to reshape that. I may need to reduce the overhang on this shed. And so the butter, the gutter <laughs> needs to be shortened, I can always double click on it, edit the solid. Oh, no, it didn't like that. I might have to start over. Yeah, no, uh, it, it won't let me go back and, and redo it, which, you know, okay, no big deal. It's, it's, it's just drawing a wall, very easy to trace, right? And then of course, you could do the same thing with, um, with a round gutter, of course, you can't do that with a wall. So let me just throw in a round gutter here on the fly. Um, I'm just gonna go to top plan view. Okay, and uh, I'll just trace these two edges here with a, a polygon. Okay, and then I'll just offset it, say, oh, uh yeah four inches works and then i'll just uh draw a circle give it a six inch diameter and make it a 180 degree sweep so it's a an arc not a circle and then i'll just select these two things and under model extrude along path i'll define that as the uh, path object Huh, what's going on there? Polygon, arc, interesting. They're both layer plane. Maybe I need to make them screen plane objects. Hmm. All right. Well, you know, let's try the exact same thing one more time. See if it works this time. That is kind of a joke, but that's not what I want. There we go. Uh, so let's go back to my save view. Right. So, you know, that's in the slightly wrong height. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the correct um, class, my kind of catch-all roof accessory class. Notice that my gutter is open at the end, which again, that's may not be accept acceptable. I'm gonna move it down a few inches because I know that's just, if it's driving me crazy, it's gonna drive somebody else crazy too. All right, so I'm gonna go back in and change the profile of the object and make that arc in the roof accessory class. It's oddly rotated, so I'll just put it here and rotate it. And I might, for example, add this line and then select the arc and the line and uh, compose. So now I've got this polyline. Only now, of course, my my gutter is solid. So once again, shell solid comes to the rescue. And there we go. Now I have a proper gutter um, with uh, 
you know, that's 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 capped on on the end. Now that's just that's just plain old 3D modeling, but you know, since since I was showing you a box gutter, I felt like I had to show you a, a round gutter. Uh, okay. Um, uh, John, th thank you for your question. And I think I'm going to have to answer that uh, offline because it's a, it's a, it's a very meaty question. Um, but, um, Let's see. And then I guess the last thing is I just wanted to, you know, we've been spending a lot of time on on 2D objects, but or 3D objects rather, but you know, there's some, there's lots of, of 2D parametric objects as well. Right. So one example is the repetitive unit tool. So let's go to the detailing palette. Um, there's linear material and there's a repetitive unit, right? And so um, that might look like, you know, something like this, where by default, it's uh, just showing some profile and it's just repeating it. Um, I can use a, a custom uh, pitch. So in other words, the, um, the pitch is just the space, like, you know, like, like the pitch of uh, airplane seating, it's the space from from one unit to the next. So I can make them nine inches apart or ten inches apart on center, whatever, right? And um, so, out of the box, right? There's all of these uh, default uh, under your VectorWorks libraries. If you just look at choose symbols, there's flooring, there's framing symbols, there's masonry units. There's all sorts of miscellaneous roofing, you know, roof shingles and whatnot, tiles, siding profiles that you can choose. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, even though there's a decent little library here, it might not be everything that you want. So there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with um, in on your own. Let's go over to the symbols for this file. And I think it's going to be in the detail folder. Yeah, here we go. So um, just went online, looked at some old timey wood siding options and uh, from various uh, mills and got a profile that, that was um, um, I think a, a double teardrop and just drew it, right? And so that's, that's what all of these are. Um, could have done the same thing with the, with the nails, right? I could have had a repetitive unit that was just a series of nails spaced, you know, one, one board apart, but, uh, you know, just because it's trying to, uh, you know, Vectorworks is defaulting to some sort of plastic wood deck or something like that. doesn't mean you can't use the tool, uh, to do, uh, something that is your own or, uh, necessary for, um, for your own um project so uh the repetitive stress uh, excuse me the repetitive unit is uh is a really it's a good little uh detailing tool and you can get a lot of mileage out of it as you as you customize that uh i think that's that pretty much covers what i wanted to cover the the last thing is i just wanted to give a plug for myself and um, I sent out a request a couple of weeks ago. If any of you have um, seen any of my books and would like to uh, post a little review on, on Amazon, that would be grand. Here's some QR codes. You can do a screen capture or whatever, but um, any questions before I wrap up for the day? Yeah, I have a quick question, Francois. Yeah, Harlan. Uh, could you just, I, I somehow missed where you made your custom profile of repetitive unit. Could you just oh. quickly redo that? Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's, it's not anything as complicated as the door hardware. It doesn't have to live in any special, you know, repetitive unit nirvana. 
Uh, it's just a symbol. It's just a plain old 2D symbol um, in my resource manager. I put it in a folder for, for details just so I can keep track of it. Um, and I just, uh, I don't remember exact, like, I don't think I found a DWG of this. I think I probably just uh, looked online for what seemed to be a uh, commercially available uh, wood profile. And probably they had a couple of dimensions, like the overall width and thickness, and then maybe like a, a JPEG of the profile that I dropped into Vectorworks and then just kind of drafted over it and um, assigned a hatch pattern to it. And, you know, and, and that's that. So, um, so that's in, in when you draw a repetitive unit with the repetitive unit tool, you can specify which symbol you use. And so, so long as you can find that symbol, whether it's in a, 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 a shared file or it's within your actual file, uh, then there it is. Like, you know, I can try the nail, for example. I mean, it'll let you do anything, refrigerators, you know, whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's, it's very, very straightforward. So here I just, you know, changed it. You. Yeah, yeah, you're very welcome. You know, and and these little wood profiles and whatnot, like you know, drawing them the first time, like many things, is you know, kind of a hassle. But then, then you have it forever. So, uh, something in the chat. Oh, thank you, Becky. Appreciate your your um, coming by. Okay, everybody. Well, thanks very much. Really appreciate it, and. Um, Let's see, we are not meeting next month because it just seems like the weather will be nice and it'll be March. And uh, and then um, Matthew and, and I need to um, collaborate on, cook up some sort of um, social gathering uh, the following month where we could you know get together in person and shoot the breeze instead of this uh, uh, Zoom thing. So anyway, awesome. thank you everyone, I appreciate it. Thanks, Francois. Yeah, thank you all. Take care. Bye-bye.